Greetings, Meki 104. This is a short video to introduce the concept of the morphological table or the morphological chart. It's another design tool, specifically a design tool that helps with concept generation. And to motivate the discussion, I'm showing you here a morphological table that was created by um, team P17432. It was a 2016 to 2017 team in the multidisciplinary senior design course sequence. That is a capstone course sequence that you will take in your last year of study at RIT. It is um, a similar idea to 104 in the sense that it's a design project. Um, the, the main difference is you will work in a fairly large team of engineers from across different disciplines, electrical, computer, um, industrial systems engineering, and so forth to create a pretty significant project all the way through from the design concept to final build type, build test and uh, and so and deliver. <clears throat> so uh, it's a great example here, I think, of the concept. And let me set the stage for where you would be at. What you would typically do, and you've done some of these steps already, you'd take what it is that you're working on your system or product or whatever it is that you're designing, in this case, your design project, uh, go through a process of a functional decomposition. From that functional decomposition, you'd identify the, the key functionalities that you need to somehow achieve in your device or system. Uh, then you do brainstorming on those functionalities. And the brainstorming stage, you could have some fairly wild ideas. And if you remember, the concept is to really get as many ideas as you possibly can. But at some point, then you need to come back, bring things back together, narrow things down a bit, come back down to the sort of the the realm of possibilities, um, the morphological table allows you to do that. So again, looking at this as an example, let me zoom in a little bit on it. This, they have um, some actually pretty nice hand sketches of, of things you can see here arranged in this table. Along the left, the leftmost column are the sub-functions they've identified. So again, the things that would come out of a functional decomposition. And this machine it is the plastic bottle rope machine. The idea was fairly clever. They were trying to think of a way that they could take uh, empty used plastic bottles um, and slice them up and somehow attach them together and weave them together to make rope out of them. So you can see some of the functions they had come up with that need to reshape the bottle. So I think after it had been crushed perhaps and returned um, or, or picked out of the trash, whatever the case may be. So maybe to, to sort of reinflate it, so to speak, right? So it's no longer crushed. Clean it out. Uh, slice the polymer string, meaning slice up the bottle somehow. So these aren't necessarily in the order of which they would have to occur. Uh, join the string strands together pull string, weave string in a rope, spool rope, and so forth. So um, what's really nice about this is you can see the functions as they lift the, list them on the left absolutely follow this verb noun pair um, format that we mentioned. Then there's a numbering across the top one through four. So in each one of these rows, for, so for instance, reshape bottle, they have four different ideas for that. <clears throat> They've got very simple sketches, a little bit of some uh, wording in there and what it does to help further explain what it's, what it's doing. Um, but these would have all come from their brainstorming activities. And when they're done, they sort of whittled it down to just four in each category that were probably the most promising or most reasonable or most, um, well, uh, maybe the easiest to achieve or, or most in line with what they had capabilities to do. So I want to be clear here, <clears throat> they would have done some brainstorming on each one of these functions, probably had far more ideas than this, but then came back to uh, sort of the, the most reasonable and most promising a set of four in each one, in each one of these categories, in each one of these functionalities to build this table. The idea from here then is that you would select one, ideally you would uh, select one concept from each of these columns in each row and use that to build up one particular concept. So in other words, you might pick at the top <clears throat> air pressure, so item two there, um, clean the bottle like a sponge in water, maybe that first one in the second row, a saw in third column in the third row, and so forth, and pick all of those things to say, well, these are the particular uh, sub-function concepts that we will think of a way to combine them all together to give an overall system concept that then will, will constitute one idea for a way to meet this system design 
overall to meet all of the functions there for all of the requirements. So it's a way to just help you organize all of your thoughts and maybe by seeing these things together you can think of ways to to build a system that is overall with the functionality that you want. So it's a pretty neat way to be able to do it, a clever way to be able to do it. I should point out that's not to say that things would come together exactly as they're shown here. These were just rough, just rough sketches for the idea. They're meant to trigger um, other concepts, other thoughts, other larger ideas when you put them together. So for instance, if you picked the uh, sponge in water, say for clean bile, you still have to figure out, well, what does that actually look like in practice? Would the sponge somehow be built onto some automated system or would it literally be a person doing this individually? It doesn't specify that, it just says that's the idea. So you still have to think of how these things would fit together into your concept. But the point is when you see all these laid out, it might help you trigger then connections between them that you wouldn't have. So it's a visual way to, start to stem sort of further brainstorming on how to put all the concepts together. I want to show you as another example of this. So this, I think, is an excellent example. This will be posted on the My Courses site, but it's an, ex an excellent example of how these would be put together. Okay, an example of sort of the usage of it overall. There's a website that uh, I found here at Florida State University. They have a similar course to the senior design course at RIT. Um, and one of the resources they have is a discussion of the morphological chart. What I like about this site and what I encourage you to come take a look at, again, I'll put a link to this on the My Courses homepage for, for Mechie 104. They start at the top. So again, understand here there's multiple pages in this, uh, this sort of website devoted to their design course. This is somewhere along a process where they show an example of how you move through the entire design set of design tasks to, to design a system. But they've arrived here at the point where they've done the, their functional decomp and brainstorming and so forth. They've made this morphological chart or morphological table. <clears throat> it's for a device which is meant to, to pick vegetables. And I assume the kind that are so, sort of ground grown like potatoes or squash or something like that. <clears throat> So they have a, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, looks like six different functions that were identified. Um, they're not worded as the way we would prefer. For, so for instance, it says ve vegetable picking device, um, but you could easily change this around and just say pick vegetables, place vegetables, sift dirt, and so forth. So that's not a, a major issue there. So they are, are very close to the notion of our, our functions. But in any event, what's key about this is each one of these has multiple ideas. So what I'd like about this website though is if you keep scrolling down, they then show you how they can build individual concepts out of those. So the first concept shown here is, and you can see listed right underneath it, they're identifying how they picked amongst the different options in each row to build up an overall system. And the very first one here is something to note. You don't necessarily have to pick something from each row. One option is certainly to do nothing for each one of the functions. Um, that is possible. In fact, some people in their morphological tables will list nothing as one, as one of the options to highlight that. But of course, you could do that in any event. But understand that means that they've somehow accounted for the fact if that's a necessary functionality, uh, if they don't pick one of the sub-function concepts to build into the system concept, then if they need that functionality, the assumption is that that functionality is captured somewhere else. So in any event, they've got those three, these uh, six different options they put together into their first concept. You can see the, uh, a, a representation of that. It's, it's quite a bit better than just a sketch. It is an actual solid model of that. So that's uh, pretty well advanced. You would not necessarily get right to that point right away. You might still have a, uh, a fairly simplistic sort of sketch of the overall system. But the point is it's showing in greater detail, detail how they're put together. So let's look at their dirt sifting device, option three. So that up here says it's uh, slits in plow or carrier. So the idea is that I guess as it scoops it up, the plow part that sort of scoops up the dirt containing these vegetables, the dirt would just fall through these slits. So if I come back again to concept one, you can see how that's been integrated into their system, like almost this rotating thing here where it'll just fall out as it sort of scoops up the vegetables and plops them into the back here in this cart. So I'm trying to do by showing you that is again, um, it's a crude sort of conceptualization of the morphological table. When it comes time to put it into the system level concept, you might have to make some modifications for that. But the point is the concept is there in the bigger concept, the bigger system. 
So there's one of them that they show. If you scroll down here, there's a Concept 2. <clears throat> Again, a fairly sophisticated solid model of it that serves as a sketch. Um, this used dirt sifting device option one. I'll just focus on that again as a as an example. If you go up and look at their table, their morph table, that was a square mesh. So again, I'm trying to show you, well, that was just a relatively simplistic concept of how you would sift the dirt. You have to think of how that would be actually integrated into the overall system concept. I believe that's what these sort of slots are in this conveyor or whatever this is here that the dirt would just fall through the slits. So when they're using that, although they've, they've kind of had to think of a, of a sort of a larger um, conceptualization of how it would go into their system level design, but there it is. And you can see some other ones. Also, they've got about a paragraph here explaining how things work together. Also a very good idea. A concept three and a concept four. So they've picked overall here four different concepts that came out of that single morphological table. There's similarities between them, but there's also some pretty, pretty substantial differences between them too. And if you do uh, the, sort of the math here, there's quite a few, a large number of different potential concepts, system level concepts you could generate out of this morphological table. So it's an extremely useful tool for sort of putting things together. And again, by looking at the visual layout of this, the visual elements, sometimes just by doing that, it can spark you to, to come up with new system level concepts that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise. The next thing you would do after that, after you have your potential system kind of concept, system level concepts, is to move on to something uh, such as a pew matrix to help you then uh, objectively, as objectively as possible, differentiate and select between those ultimately trying to get to a single concept that one will be moved forward into the final design. That pew matrix is uh, discussed in another video. Thank you for watching.